Hey guys, what's going on? Glove Save Gaming back here with another video. We're on to season number six of the Boston Bruins franchise mode. Like I said in the past videos, another disappointing first round exit from the Bruins. I thought we had a really solid roster last season, but meeting the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round was just not ideal for us, and they took us down in six games. I made a lot of changes this offseason. Like I said, I didn't know what I was going to do at first. Then I decided to just say screw it and kind of just make some moves that I feel like that would benefit the team in the long run. Uh, Connor Garland, definitely going to move him up the line up here. He's a guy we acquired this offseason. We sent Hampus Lindholm the other way to... I think he was still with Vancouver, to be quite honest. Let me take a look, actually, because I don't remember exactly who we traded him from oh never mind kansas city huskies the 33rd nhl team so we sent lindholm who's an 85 and arbor jack who's a 79d uh straight up for garland so we got a pretty good top six forward uh, i just had to sit, decided to deal lindholm because i felt like we needed t to sacrifice a little bit of the defense for offense just because we were playing good defense and uh it wasn't translating into good offense especially in crunch time uh, Mike Matheson was also traded. He was an 81 overall. And we got Vitelli Kravtsov and a third round pick. So it was a straight up 81 for 81 plus we got the pick. He had a pretty good season in the AHL last year. Hoping that he can translate it to the NHL. Because uh, with Detroit he didn't really have a good season uh, before that one. We made two other deals. The other one was straight up one for one trade. We got Simone Edvinson from Detroit straight up for Grossman, the defensive defenseman we had. He was an RFA. He actually got off receipt sheeted by Tampa for like four and a half million or something. We ended up matching it. And then I traded him for Edvinson. I feel like Edvinson has a little bit more offensive upside. And that's something that we're looking for on this team. And as you can tell, Timothy Lilgren's also a new body on this team. We got him from the Maple Leafs, and we traded him for Gabriel Daigle, who's in 70 high starter goalie, so a, definitely a good goaltending prospect, and a third, and we traded for Lilligren in a third. So um, the picks were kind of just swapped from the Leafs, plus we got that goaltender, Emil Vinny, uh, who's a young goaltender right now. I think he's getting drafted maybe 2024, probably the best goalie in the draft. He will be our backup goaltender this year to Jeremy Swayman. I thought on the entry-level contract was really beneficial. We were closer to the cap. And as you guys can tell in our lineup here, uh, Alex Zetterberg, who's a prospect, will be playing. He's a first-round pick. And this is the end of an era for Patrice Bergeron. He's no longer a Boston Bruin. Wanted a little bit too much money for what he was going to provide us. And I decided to walk away. Um, it was a very good run. I was really happy. He got that first Stanley Cup, but it was it sucked that we weren't able to get the second one um, and possibly even more. Connor Bedard was signed to a five-year deal at $9 million. This was an absolute no-brainer. 94 overall, one of the best centermen in the NHL right now. $9 million, I'll take it for the rest of the franchise mode, especially because the cap's gone up. Uh, Fabian Lysel was signed to a three-year deal at $2 million. Um, Oh, never mind. He actually accepted his qualifying offer. I thought he accepted the three-year deal at $2 million, but... I guess we'll revisit that in the offseason. That I'm sure he wants a long-term deal, but I'll still take it at 2.1. Um, Andrew Kopp was signed to a two-year deal, and I believe it was 3.175. Uh, pretty good deal for an 84 overall centerman. He seems like a Boston Bruin type player, so I thought it was good to bring him in. And uh, Lucas Carlson will be playing uh, third line left defense, two-year deal, 800K for an 80 overall defenseman. Thought that was really solid. I'm really hoping that, again, we can make the playoffs and get past round one. I think we have a pretty solid team, and we sacrificed a little bit of defense for offense, like I was saying, and hopefully this is enough to get by a top team in the first round. All right, guys, we are here at the end of season number six. Very good season for us. As you can see, we're in the bottom right corner of the playoff tree, playing the Buffalo Sabres in round one. I know we had about 52 or 53 wins this year, Finished at least the top two in our division. Uh, I believe first, actually, to be honest with you. We'll be playing the winner of Tampa Toronto in the second round if we can get by the Sabres in round one. I was very impressed with our season. 52-26-4 uh, and four is the final record coming in first place in the Atlantic division. And hopefully playing a wild card team will help us get by round in round one. Actually finished tied for first in the NHL. Tied for regulation overtime wins as well. 
but I guess we're gonna get it. Uh, I'm not sure how we will, uh, but we are gonna finish first in the NHL. Can't believe it took to get rid of Patrice Bergeron to be that good in the regular season. Uh, Connor Bedard leading the way for the Boston Bruins at 69 points, only 21 goals. Pretty surprised that he wasn't able to score more. Uh, good acquisitions in the offseason. Andrew Kopp, even Zetterberg coming up from the minors. Look at this guy, like 51 points as a rookie. He had a really good season in the AHL before that. All four of our centers producing. It seems like everyone just had a pretty solid season. Maybe not Connor Garland coming in uh, for Hampus Lindholm, but at least he's going to fit well lower in the lineup. Jacob Bryson having quite a career with the Boston Bruins this is his fifth season now and he looks like he's just kind of getting better every single year Simone Edvinson has been pretty good since he came here same with Lilgren and the guys deeper in the lineup are doing their job as you can see here Jacob Middleton is a new face in town we got him at the deadline for the New York Islanders along with Taylor Radish who's a 79 straight up for I think his last name was Kahneman we drafted him in the first round this year he was a 67 medium top six forward and I thought it was worth it to bring another defenseman in and year after year Jeremy Swayman six seasons in a row now just being unbelievable uh four of those six seasons his save percentage was in the 920s in his worst season he had a 914 but he still had 41 wins just absolutely incredible he i'm surprised he hasn't won a vesna yet he was really close a couple times but it seemed like andre vasilevsky was getting it over him and i feel like this could be his year look at that like 921 the closest guy's a 918 kochikov maybe because he played 10 more games but i feel like it's more impressive uh that swayman had one less win in 10 less games played wonder who the norris is gonna go to here Shabbat again it seems like every year doesn't matter with this guy. He's just unbelievable in this game I made him really good offensively because he is actually so um, Him or Makar is definitely gonna win the Norris. He's got more points though So I think it's gonna go to him in the long run. Uh, did he have the most points in the league? Yeah, I think he's gonna get it because he, he could potentially win the heart dry side of 52 goals looks like he's gonna win the rocket Richard Surprise Austin Matthews kind of slowed down a bit. I know 41 still a lot half a goal a game, but um, He's hit 70 a couple times even close. He looks 72 goals and now he's just Trailing off to that. It's pretty surprising 72 goals 19 assists is quite the season um, We're gonna get going here on the playoffs uh, I've said this for five years straight now, but we really got to get by this round Buffalo had a really good season though as well, so I'm hoping we can take them down I'm I did not mean to sim as an individual game here But we're gonna do that for game one and it looks like Buffalo. Oh my god We tied the game four goals in the third period and we're back in it and we're gonna win the game one in overtime That's quite a comeback being down four nothing at the end of the second period four goals in the third period and overtime win for the Boston Bruins in game one at home. That's a crucial victory. We don't want we don't want Buffalo blowing us out, especially in game one. And kind of reliving that deja vu once again. And we're gonna sim here normally. Just go through the games quite quickly. And we're not down to three to one. And this series is over. Oh my. The first place team in the NHL is eliminated in five games in round one i don't know what your guys thoughts are but that is that's even more mind-boggling than last season i think I, I just don't understand like how do we just keep losing like what do we need to do to actually get by in round one like it's like we're honestly turning into like some of these teams that just can't win a playoff round and it's it's frustrating we're not even i don't think we forced one single game seven in the five first round losses we have we've lost most of the series in five games Connor mcdavid leon dreisaitl getting a stanley cup i uh, might be more than their first in this franchise sim calgary getting the second overall pick with pittsburgh's pick i don't i think uh, crosby's actually a flame now which is kind of funny that they're going to be getting such a high pick um with their pick there and we'll take a look at the um playoff tree quickly here and then we'll take a look at the league awards 
quite interested to see who won the uh, playoff MVP and if Jeremy Swayman was able to get the Vezina Trophy for the first time. Toronto Maple Leafs losing in seven to the Edmonton Oilers. Colorado making it back to the conference finals. New York Rangers as well after winning the Stanley Cup last season. Going all the way back to the conference finals. President's Trophy goes to us. Uh, can't believe that we're out in the first round. Art Ross goes to Shabbat, but McKinnon gets the heart. Makar gets the Norris, Lady being the dry sidle. Zetterberg, quite the season. Not surprised that he won the Calder. McDavid wins the Con Smythe. Vesna to Carter Hart. I honestly think Swayman got shafted there. 921 save percentage and tied for second in the league and wins. And he doesn't get it. That's just crazy. This Parise guy, I'd say Daryl Sutter gets the uh, coach of the year. Ted Lindsay goes to McKinnon, and Maurice Richard goes to Leon Dreisaitl. So we got four more seasons left in this Boston Bruins franchise mode. Five of them were out in uh, the first round. The other one we didn't make the playoffs. It's just frustrating. I've done 16 seasons with uh, Kansas City and Boston combined, and we've only uh, made it out of the first round one time to the conference finals with them. Um, but it doesn't seem like I just I don't know if I'm not building good enough teams like maybe I should go more top heavy and Leave the bottom not as good pay more salary to the top guys But I'm just trying to make a well-rounded team, but these sims are just not really working out for me So if you have any suggestions uh, Please comment on this video or reach me on Twitter at glove save gaming and I want to thank you again for watching this video I'm excited to put out some more content for you guys and uh, would love to hear if there's any other videos you would like to see me do uh, please like and subscribe this video and have a good